Did you fail your NAPLAX exam and are confused about what to do next? In this video, I'm gonna talk about what to do if you fail a board exam, and later on, I'll talk about four steps to take next in your journey. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jessica Louie. I'm an associate professor, board certified critical care pharmacist, and entrepreneur. I help people find meaning beyond a job title and let go of burnout. This video is my personal opinion and is not sponsored. As an associate professor at a school pharmacy, I see failure all of the time. And I see it really change a student's life. And this is why I want to come in and tell you that there is life beyond failing a board exam. It is okay to feel all the feels, you know, to be angry, to cry, to scream after you get that result that you weren't expecting or was a disappointment to yourself. But after you feel all the feels, then there are steps to take on your journey to recover from this and pick yourself back up. It's really important that you don't dwell on it. I would give you about 24 hours to feel all those feelings you have, and then we're gonna move on to the four steps to start your next part of your journey. Before we get into those four steps, you're gonna take on the next part of your own journey. My number one piece of advice, do not let this failure define you as a person. You are a human being and a person first. An examination demonstrates one time point of your knowledge, one time point in your life. And maybe that one day was not your best day. And that is okay. The exam is now in the past and you cannot change the past. So now it's time to move forward. And it's time to move forward with a plan, not steps. And I'm gonna give you four net steps to move forward. Step one in your, your next journey. Get the help that you need. I often see students afraid to tell people about their board exam results. And I think this really hinders you. It's really important that you reach out to people that you trust, your mentors, your professors, anyone around you that you can share your results with. It's really important that you're open and honest with this because everyone around you wants to help, wants to help you be the best person you can be and enter this profession together. So please tell people that you trust and ask for help, you know, and start assessing where, where the things went wrong. Did you need more time to study? Did you need a different type of study resource? Did you need more accountability during that process? Did you need less hours at work and more time for this board preparation? You can find even more help on our YouTube videos about how to study for board exams and get the help you need on our Find Your Script shop as well. All those links are in the description. Step number two on your journey, get the accountability that you need. It's really important when we're facing challenges and setting goals that we have an accountability partner who's checking in with us and making sure we're staying on schedule and within our goals. You can share your goals, you can share your study schedule, you can share your next exam date with this accountability partner and that accountability partner can check in with you daily or weekly to make sure you're on track and see when there's problems if you get off track. Step number three in your journey. Set goals and reverse engineer how you're going to get to those goals. So many times we're taking a board exam for a specific reason, because we have a job lined up, we have postgraduate training, residency or fellowship lined up. So let's start with the end in mind. Is there a certain date that you need to take your board exam by and pass it by? Then we're going to make sure you take that board exam by that specific date, whether that's July 1st, September 1st, October 1st, whatever that might be in your own schedule. And once we have that date set, then we can reverse engineer how you're going to get to that date. So is it one month? Is it three months from now? And now you're gonna know how many hours per week I need to dedicate to this process to get to that end goal of taking that board exam by a certain date. You can reverse engineer how you're gonna feel confident by that date. Do you need it to spend a certain number of hours per week on topics? Is there a certain number of practice questions you want to have taken by that date? And you're going to break it up by week and then by day so you know how many questions per week you're going to get to to get to that end goal. And then if you know how many questions per week you wanna do, then you can divide that up by how many days you're studying. 
It could be topics per week, it could be questions per week, it could be calculations per week, or it could be hours per week. It's really up to you how you're gonna feel confident at the end of the day and get to that end goal of taking the board exam by a new date. And this is really important that you break it into baby steps so you know what your end goal is. You know, one month, three months from now, you're gonna reverse engineer how you're gonna get there each week and then each day and set it into your calendar and then share it with your accountability partner. Step number four on your journey, simplify and let go of things on your calendar to really focus. Now, as you planned out your goals and your schedule in the last two steps to help you get to those goals and that schedule, is there anything on your calendar you need to let go of right now? Be honest with yourself. A lot of times, we have to remember that this is a very short season of our life. You know, spending one, three, five months on this on our overall career that may be 10, 20, or 30 years is a really short time frame. So sometimes we do need to let go of things on our calendar for this short time frame. It is temporary. Maybe it is good to let go of something in this short season of your life. Maybe a new hobby you would plan to take up or maybe a vacation you would plan to take. Putting that off temporarily can help you in the long run. I highly recommend being really honest with yourself in this process. Don't short yourself because this is an investment, a short-term investment for the next one to six months studying and prepping for your board exam so you have a profession that lasts decades. Maybe it does mean that you do need to have honest and open conversations about your calendar and what's on it, especially if your family and loved ones are partaking in your calendar and your focus for the next short season of your life and have open conversations about what belongs on there and what doesn't. And come to an agreement with family or loved ones about what's most important in this short season so you're all on the same page and you're all working towards the same goal together. Maybe that means carving out more time on the evenings or early mornings or weekends. And you know, over the short term, yes, it's going to be a little bit more intense, but over the long term, it's really gonna pay off for you to be certified and licensed in the profession. Now you've gone through those four steps and you're ready to take your board exam. Congratulations, you put in the time and the investment for yourself and you feel confident to take this exam again. Make sure that you're standing strong, do that superhero pose to feel confident before you take your board exam. And remember that no matter what happens, it is one time point in your life. It does not define you as a person. What defines you is how you get back up and restart with something that is really important to you and your career and your life. Now make sure that you're watching our other videos on how to study and how to let go of burnout in your life. Until next time, spark joy.